Today we're sitting with Josh Williams. Hey, got a new project going on here in the Black Hills. Just stay tuned and check it out. Hey, everybody. This episode is sponsored by Dr. Kachikin of Black Hills Regional Alliance, who's done extensive research in LASIK, PRK, corneal transplants, glaucoma. You can check his website out, stevekmd.com, or you can check him out on social media at stevekmd1. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. If you got any eye questions or anything, check them out. Just contact Dr. Kachikian, stevekmd.com. Stay tuned. And if you're interested in sponsoring an episode from Black Hills Podcast, contact us at blackhillspodcast at gmail.com. Original. <laughs> a so, true, a true Brandon Tobar original. <laughs> Before we give away this <clears throat> project, uh, let's let's start by talking about the community here a little bit. Now, we are a couple dudes who are into music. Yeah, we are. Uh this place, man, like punk rock shows a long time ago. What we what year was your first punk rock show? <clears throat> you know, it's it's crazy being such a music fan. Um, I actually didn't get into punk rock until well after I was fully engulfed in hip hop culture. Oh yeah. So, and that goes back to the very late eighties, early nineties. Um, so it wasn't until I think I heard my first rancid album that I actually got into punk rock. So it was more of the late nineties for me where most of my counterparts that are really into punk rock grew up in that life. Like that was their first love was punk rock music. Yeah. Um, and I heard my first rancid album long after they had already been well established, probably around, I was living in Las Vegas cause that's where I went to my first punk rock show. So that was probably around 99. Yeah. A lot of people around here, man, they, one thing they've always wanted to do was start a band. The music scene has died. Oh yeah. It has died. <clears throat> uh, with so much technology that we have now, everything that you can get on the internet, you can get online recorders for free. You can just go buy a cheap SD card, uh, get a recorder, and then you know grab your guitar and go and put it on YouTube or whatever and submit to Spotify, iTunes, everything. What made you want to start this? And what is it? <clears throat> well, it's an interesting thing. Um, before we started rolling camera, you and I, had a brief chat about how if you if you feel something in your heart or you have an idea, yeah. Um, what happens to so many great ideas is people have them, yeah, right, and they think about them and they talk about them, and then a year later they're still thinking about them and talking about them. The motivation is just it's tough. I think I think people finding motivation is what's hard, and I think it really boils down to I'll pull that in just a little. I think it really boils down to people having a a pretty serious fear of failure. Yeah. Which is odd to me. Well, I guess it's not. It's not something I came across until a couple of years ago where I really started getting motivated to live a different life. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of get sucked into this dull kind of existence <laughs> yeah. um, and you start wanting more. And that happened for me a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm 40. I just turned 41. So I was a kind of a late bloomer into the go out and, and get stuff done kind so, of life you so know what i mean I, man, so 38 years old man. yeah Just, it took a while i had like that fire under your ass yeah you well know? like my wife and i like to say i had to get the stupid out first you know what i mean that's so, true we both did yeah um a good friend of mine who's my partner keenan angel shout out to keenan um he does wedding photography he's really he's really talented and he had posted on facebook about kind of trying to get some feedback from people like hey i'm thinking about Oh, starting a studio, getting a studio, and what are your people's thoughts on that? So me being the all-knowing because I just got a degree because that matters <laughs> um, in business and marketing, I reached out to him and I told him, I said, you know, the first thing you need to consider here is your return on your investment. If you're going to get a studio downtown, what do you need to make for you to justify having that studio? Now, Keenan is a father and a husband and he works full time and he does wedding photography. So he's a busy dude. Yep. So that was my question was, is it going to be worth it for you? 
And then I said, well, because if you're looking for ways to kind of monetize this studio, I have some ideas for you. And he was like, okay, well, what is that? So I came up with an idea and maybe we'll get around to doing that idea. It's not even about that idea. What that did was it opened up a dialogue between us and being two creative guys, as it tends to happen, once two creative individuals get together and start Synapses talking, synapses started popping and they just goes ideas. crazy. Yeah, that's good. So we kind of came up with a concept and he was looking to do something for the creative community in Rapid City, which, you know, is actually huge. It is. There's a lot of really talented creative people here, yeah. yourself included. I mean, look at what you got going on here. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'll, I'll side note that in a minute. Um, so we started discussing what what could happen if we if we leased out a space downtown, and you know it's in the Buell Building, and it's called Creative Six Hundred Five Studio. That was kind of what was born of us having some conversations. I like that. Um, so through those conversations, we came up with a unique idea to to help other people while we could kind of help ourselves. I've long been a huge fan of photography and it's a passion of mine, but it's one of those things that I'm not a professional at. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really on board with him starting a studio where there would be a photo studio involved. <clears throat> oh, okay. Cause it That's would give awesome. me a chance to work on my, my techniques and skills because ultimately someday I would love to do photography as you know, more than just a hobby. Yeah. So we started chatting about that in ways that we could use that studio space to do some photo work. Well, then that idea kind of started snowballing into, well, what about other creatives in our community? What about painters? What about people that do pottery? What about um, songwriters that need a space to go to and kind of just... Whew. Oh, yeah. Self-expression is the best kind of therapy out there. It's so and, good. And yeah, a lot of people around here, just because it's a hobby doesn't mean you can't fully like express yourself and then take it further. I mean, you know, you got your nine to five and you have to, but you can honestly be so motivated that you love what you, you do for fun. You drop everything and do it. I just, I got a email from a buddy of mine who was going, um, he's always been like an EMT and all this stuff. And he started going to medical school. Uh, he dropped everything to do, uh, uh, physique competitions and now he's a full-time coach and i was like that's a big ballsy move dude he's like it's not about the money it's about being happy and i'm like you need to tell more people this man yeah. because there's so many more people that are just about that buck but i mean we all need to make a living but but I, what's I might, enough you know my, what I mean? my happiness like, is more important to me than being rich it's and it is and that's what i wanted to come on and talk to you about because i i, I saw it in you when you started up this podcast i'm like okay here's a dude that's basically doing the exact same thing that I wish more people in this community would do. Yeah. And like you're talking about your friend doing, it's about taking a leap. It is. And it sounds cheesy and it's kind of cliche, but like taking that leap of faith. You got it. If you, if you, and we're a little older, so I really oh, try yeah. to preach this to like my children. Younger who, crowd. Yeah. Who don't listen. You know what I mean? They, it's <laughs> whatever. But so for you and I, we kind of get it. Because we're older and I dare we say a little wiser. I don't know. <laughs> but you get to a point where you, you start thinking about your past and your future. And you go, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. This isn't my passion. So find your passion. And if it makes money, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you can make some dough, because I mean, we all want dough. <clears throat> but more than that, like you say, it's something that you love to do. So take a jump, man. See if it works. I, I think... The older you get, the more regretful that you are, that you haven't done what you really wanted to do. And now you're willing to risk everything to be more fulfilled and happy to do what you want in your life rather than have this. You know, we've done, we've had every job, every shit job and yeah. apartment and house and stuff. And then we thought we had the good life. But that little bit of being happy and doing what you want every day when you wake up and it's so easy that is more fulfilling and more happier than anything yeah and that's a big part of it too uh it's it's odd i i'm a big fan of books i read a lot a, a <laughs> yeah it's 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 madness that's um, awesome because i can't <laughs> oh it's it's nuts uh <laughs> Being so busy as I am right now, I haven't read a ton. So now I've switched over to Audible books so I can listen in my car. Okay, yeah, I do that. So I do a lot of that. Yep. And there was a book um, 
I can't remember if it was Tim Ferriss or Chris Gillibo. I think it was Tim Ferriss. And he wrote this book called The Four Hour Work Week. Mm-hmm. And it's, you, you can't look at it like an actual four hour work week. It's more of a concept. You know what I mean? It's more of an idea. Right. Of exactly that, of waking up in the morning and doing something that you love to do and kind of making that your life so that we're not stuck in this mundane existence where we're just Monday through Friday, just yes. living for that weekend. Yes. Like I do that now and it's cool. It's cool, I guess, but it's not, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm taking strides to make sure that I'm not doing that a year from now. Cause I don't want to wake up Monday through Friday and go, I want to wake up Monday through Friday. Like, Let's get it done. Let's get it done. That's I want to do things. Little little steps, man. If you have to take these little steps, take them. But executing this first step to do what you really want to do in life, art, uh, change complete careers, do it. Like just take that first step. And some people always talk about like South Dakota, Rapid City, the Black Hills area. They're like, um, I hate it here. I want to move. If you want to start all over, sell every single thing you got. Fill your tank up, grab some McDs, and and yeah, go. Because I mean, it. you got to try it out. But starting all over, you're not going to be able to take this whole exact life and transfer it somewhere else because you got, you know, a house you're renting out and all your furniture, uh, all your things, and they want to take all that. That are with. so important. Yeah, it's just get rid of everything and then go get a cheap little studio apartment, start making friends, and start all over and try it out. Because, yep. I mean, if you're going to get stuck here and you're going to regret staying here, you're not going to appreciate it, you need to go find your appreciation because this place is not that bad. No, it's not. And you know what's crazy about that is for the last year or so, my wife and I kind of got obsessed with this idea of, okay, once I graduate school, we're out of here. <laughs> want to go somewhere where it's popping, you know, yeah. where it's banging. I lived in Vegas for a long time. I lived in Denver, these, you know, metropolises. And I'm like, that's younger crowds there too. So such younger crowds. Yep. And while there is a lot of advantages, I don't even want to say advantages, just unique aspects of those kind of places. Mm -hmm. So we had become sort of obsessed with this idea that we were going to start scouting out locations to move. And then we were going to start doing something yeah. bigger. Mm -hmm. That is really faulty thinking. It to is. think that that's the way to go. So we recently went to Florida on like a week vacation to go visit my father-in-law and one of my best friends, and they live on separate sides of the state. Now, we were looking at home prices in Florida thinking, okay, maybe Florida's the joint, man. That might be the jam. Long story short, we get there. The humidity is a real thing that I didn't believe in, and so no-go on Florida. Oh, yeah. But it was in Florida that we started thinking – God, the Black Hills, man, that's really where it's at. It's really not that bad. It's here. really not that bad. And it's inspiring. It's beautiful. Um, we have some issues, obviously, but we got home and the talk was no longer where are we going to move? The talk became, I think this is home. Yeah. And now's the time yep. to start spinning these wheels yeah, because is... I don't want to be stuck having this conversation three years from now, yeah. I, I refuse to have this conversation three years, from maybe now. three years from now, if I'm still doing this podcast, hopefully we can talk about the boom in business. And well, hopefully I'll be sponsoring you with like a good five oh. K a month, you know, that'd feeler. Awesome. That'd be, that'd be pretty great. I'll get that dough and I'll pass them along. Heck yeah. Um, I need some sponsors for sure. Uh, sponsorships. <laughs> but, Brandon uh, Tobar donation fund. So this is the studio that you're going to open up downtown and it's a, recording studio not so much a recording studio no um what it is is we were thinking of what we could do with a space and for ourselves personally okay i was also looking to start my own business at the time so not only was i looking at it from a photography standpoint i was also looking at it from a standpoint of i need an office because what i've learned over the last year or so is sitting at my desk at home shit gets done nothing there's no motivation at home there's dogs yeah. there's children there's tv there's music there's the food. garage needs clean there's food there's too many things yep. there's a sock drawer you know what i mean it's not the environment to get work done it's not yeah, so i was looking that at that too like hey yep. man if you got the studio i would maybe break you off a little bit to use it as an office 
Um, so then we started thinking, you know, there's these downtown studios up on the, the second floor of the Buell building. They're not big. Yeah. They're, they're smaller. But we started thinking, well, we could craft it into this perfect space. And we'll make it a really inspiring kind of place, really open. There's light coming in. Uh, it's very modern. So what we came up with was we would create this studio <clears throat> that people like ourselves that wanted to do photography would have a place to work. Cool. One of the ideas behind that is there's a lot of really talented photographers in the Black Hills. Yeah. And only a handful of them can maybe afford or justify what it costs to actually have a studio where they could do studio work at, where they could bring in a husband and wife and a baby a client and stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Do that kind of work. Yep. So a lot of these really talented photographers can't do that kind of work because they don't have a space for it. Right. So we wanted to have something for them people. And then we wanted to have a space where somebody who wants to paint say an eight by 10 foot canvas, just a badass canvas, just a badass canvas. Yep. Well, where do they got room to do that? At? Right. <clears throat> the garage can... but dust everywhere yeah. and it's not a professional studio and it doesn't so have the can... environment it doesn't ha you yeah. need a space man yep. I'm, I'm a big advocate of you need to create a space me too and i you have to have a space to get a studio so i can <clears throat> yeah <laughs> well see this is something you and i are gonna have to talk about after the show because <laughs> our studio would be perfect for you and that's what it's for yeah it's for people to do something they love so that was the concept um and also we're both very into giving back a little bit to the kind of people that inspire us yeah so i get inspired by musicians obviously i get inspired by artists i get inspired by photographers i get inspired by people like you that just want to create yes we want to create we wanted a space to create and that's kind of where we came up with creative and then creative 605 so then we decided okay well what do we have to offer that will draw people to this studio so we came up with a unique concept. My, my partner, Keenan actually kind of came up with this concept that our studio, which we'll be opening probably next week, keep your eye open. We'll be back to talk about that. Um, we wanted everyone to have access to this studio. So what we've done is we've, we gutted the place. We painted, f found out we suck really bad at painting. It <laughs> took us, we're like, oh, we'll knock out the paint and an afternoon and then we'll get this thing open you got rollers and it's all like Man, it's, bad. In one area. it's bad and it's still <laughs> not even that great to be honest with you but yeah. <clears throat> the color it was before was not good for us our aesthetic um so we went in and we did the work and we put in the furnishings and a desk and there'll be a computer with all the adobe set up for people that want to do like graphic design there's easels for people that want to paint there's That's a awesome. photo studio against like one that. wall with backdrops and uh these lights and other kinds of really cool stuff and a couch and chairs and yeah it's 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 awesome so what we're doing is we're opening it up and it's just free like if you're a creator if you have a project if you have a passion and you need a place to create creative 605 studio is yours to use free so it's free how does this so the idea behind the free and i'll, I'll use free lightly um a lot of people that have a passion or they want to create don't have the means to have their own studio right yep. you know what i mean we want to give them that studio so when people come in and use the studio if they have the means let's say it's let's just say it's you okay let's say you come in on a saturday you bring down your gear you're in there you got your guest you set up shop you knock your shit out the park and then you pack up and you leave mm -hmm. now on your way out the door we have a tip jar Oh. at the door on a table if you can throw a, a few bucks in there do that you yeah. know what i mean yeah um that would be great even if it's even if they're only five bucks you know your change i don't care what it is yeah if you can contribute we have a tip jar that will hopefully will will fill up with some ones and fives throughout the month cool now obviously me and keenan being sort of starving artists if you will we get that not everyone has that money. So what we've done is we've created a, a must. So you come in, you use the studio, maybe you're there all day. Maybe you're there for a couple hours. Maybe you're, I don't know what you would do. You'd have to figure something out. But if you're an artist, uh, a painter, a writer, yeah. a photographer, you are required, whether you donate some money or not, you are required to leave a piece of you, a piece of your work for the wall or a shelf. 
So if you're a photographer, you come in and sh do a shoot on Saturday, you don't really have any money to donate. That's fine. But one thing you're required to do is you find a piece of your art and you bring it to the studio so that we can put that on the wall. I like that. Yeah. It'll create a really unique kind of environment. It's like an iconic type thing to leave behind. Yeah. Right? It's neat. It's really it. cool. cool. And it's about, and then my friend was like, well, where's the, you know, you got to make money. This is a business. And what I told him was, you're not looking at it the right way. Yeah. Is it a business? I mean, I don't know. Is it? I think it's more of a. a I think it's more of a, an endeavor. <laughs> supportive. Yeah. It's not about the money. Well, money's great. It's a stepping stone. It's sort of a stepping stone. Yeah, it's going to help everybody like who can't afford a studio. Exactly. Who wants to do these things. Just go in, get a start. And after you start making some cash, give them a piece. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It grows. It grows organically. Hopefully nobody takes advantage, but there are those people out there that will take advantage. And we'll run into that problem, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. So and we will. be taking up too much time and not funding anything. Yeah. And then you're going to have to yeah. lock them out. That'll be a thing. Yeah. So, ooh. so the thing about it is, too, <laughs> um, and we talk a lot about this. We talk about, you know, kind of giving back and we talk about doing projects and we talk about kind of chasing passions. Mm hmm one of the things I was trying to explain to my friend about where the money comes from is that space also serves as a space for some really, hopefully some really creative individuals. So the same way this space came to be the same way this whole concept came to be was just a couple of guys with some ideas that kind of broke bread and said, here, we're, we're going to do this thing. So now opening this studio to everybody else allows us to have access to some other creative people. Yeah. So what happens when you get a bunch of creative people in a space and you start collaborating? Who knows what happens, but I can tell you this shit will happen. That's good. That's yeah. Good. yeah. So by bringing in other people and letting people do their work, maybe I'm in there doing some work on the computer and so-and-so wants to come in and do a photo shoot and they got something going on with some clients. And I say something to the effect of, you know, what'd be really cool with your photography is to go out to this location and do this with this person. And then maybe that conversation just starts snowballing. And the next thing you know, maybe the two of us are working on a feature film together that we've created. Yeah. That's how ideas start. Yeah. That's how passion projects get started. And that's what we want to promote. We want to okay. promote people following their passions. That's it's good. one foot in front of the other. Just do something. With, with how much media uh, is the core of it? everyday life around here everything social media this is going to be really good for rapid city to have and the black hills that everybody can come to and use it's it is it's, it's going to be a really unique thing man it's going and to actually give somebody like that little more of that spark that flame that they needed to feel okay this is going to work now i need to actually start performing towards this because i mean yeah man an environment builds so much character about a person to start doing it so and that's awesome. a lot of too what what came about with the whole like leaving a piece of you behind yeah um because not only through your spoken words not only through a gesture of allowing an artist or a creative to come in and have a space but maybe they come in that space and they see a, a hanging on the wall and that's the spark for them yeah you know what i mean maybe on their way in uh a pottery maker is on their way out and maybe something they say to each other rings true for them cool whatever that is man yeah. i don't know what that looks like yet but we're super super excited about it um just to kind of see where that grows and the hope is and we try to you have to reel yourself in you know sometimes while we talk about thinking big and dreaming big at some point sometimes you do have to kind of pump the brakes a little bit and go okay i'm getting ahead of myself yep let me put one foot here first before i just start stumbling yep but the idea is to take this space and have it start growing and have a following of people that use this space. You will for sure. Trust I me. think so. You will. There's some here. people that don't, they're like, this is a really stupid idea. There's like two or three people, but there's like two or 300 that are going, you know what you're doing? This is really unique. There's a lot of uninspired people that just don't want to do anything anyway. But for those who right now could be watching and think about doing something like this, uh, painting, music, shooting, you know, like themselves making a video that vloggers yeah it's huge and this 
is a perfect idea for yeah. them just to go out and use. And I'm not a life coach for anybody, but I feel like by letting people in on our kind of dreams, if yeah. you will, yeah. it is that. It's it inspiring is. somebody. If you can just inspire someone to do something. It's therapy for it's sure. It's therapy, yep. man. Like Absolutely. I love to watch people win. Um, obviously, everyone's got haters. I'm sure there's people looking at you like, eh, <laughs> I got, I got, I got plenty, man. I was telling you when I first saw you come on with the podcast, I'm like, Oh, this guy, but it's a perfect example of what we're talking about because my, a buddy of mine, a classmate, we had this whole idea. This was a thing and we put it out there on Instagram and Facebook. Hey, we're starting this podcast. And then we didn't put that one foot forward. Oh, we just talked a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? We just too many ideas. See, I talked about it with my girlfriend and she was like, really? (laughs) I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to, I think I'm going to start a podcast because I know a lot of people and I can talk about things. And, and I, I'll put myself on the front lines of war to like talk about things and get things adjusted in this community and talk about new businesses, all of this stuff. Like I can, I can go on for hours, but I do have to limit myself. Yeah. But well, it it gives, this gives you do. a platform. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's what I think all of us need. Well, maybe not everybody. Some people aren't into it. I'm into it. You're into it. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have it. You have it with your podcast and I'll have it with the studio is yeah. creating a platform that we can, in, if we just inspire somebody to do something. Absolutely. Then you've done your job, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. I, I like, you do have to have uh, your own rules mm. about yourself to like, your biases, your beliefs, all this. Like I, I set all those. I try most of the time to set all those aside to learn from everybody who comes in here and we talk about, you know, conflict here and stuff. And I learn about some things and then, uh, I don't know, sometimes they get a little educated. I do know quite a bit. Yeah. I'm not kind of as dumb as people think. I'm not like everyone says, like <laughs> dumb. I'm <laughs> smart and I want respect. <laughs> Absolutely, man. That's Fredo Corleone from The Godfather Part 1, for those that don't know. Fredo, that was Fredo. <laughs> That's Fredo. I'm going to have to watch that again because I thought that was a cartoon. <laughs> You're my kid brother, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, my wife had never seen The Godfather movies prior to us getting married, and she actually just watched them like a year. I don't even know if it's been a year ago, and I tell her all the time, had I known this going in, that that wedding might not have happened, man. You know, yeah, she hadn't seen The Godfather yet, so I was like, Man, I don't know if I would have put a ring on your finger if had I known. Oh man, yeah, you know, oh, okay, I take that stuff seriously. So, we're talking about movies, okay? So, a new goal of mine with this is I'm gonna start a new podcast. This one's just strictly about the Black Hills because I love this community and I need to, you know, there's not enough time on the news to really discuss things and. Yeah, yeah, get things, get points across. But I'm going to start a new one. My, let's see. I don't want to jump too fast into it. But in a year or so, I want to start making a movie. And I want to bring going out to a movie, like, fresh again around the community. Just like, I want to make more people who are inspired about making movies to start doing it. You don't need a lot of money. Like I can help Look at them Kevin out. Smith. Yeah. $10,000 clerks. You can actually do it cheaper these days yeah. with all the of technology. the free online uh, video editing equipment they have. Um, cameras nowadays on your phones, you have 4K. It is insane. You can do all this on a budget. Yeah, you can. And it is it is what we need. Like more people to think they need all this big budget film stuff. You don't. You need – you just – you need to get out and do it, and you you got limited supplies. Use it. That's yeah. all you need. Use it. Like you were talking about not needing all the big budgets. I, myself, am a movie junkie. Yeah. Um, so am I. One of my goals in life, and I actually started down this path, but I was like 21 at the time and stupid and living in Las Vegas. Yeah. Is s- screenplays. I am obsessed with screenplays. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I remember the first time I got like a real solid hookup on a screenplay was – probably about six months before the first kill bill came out and I managed to somehow surf the surf the web. And I found the screenplay <laughs> I downloaded and printed off that screenplay. And I'm like, I got Tarantino's film and it's not coming out for like six months. <laughs> I sat and read that screenplay in like three hours. 
I'm obsessed with it. Sid Field writes all these books about writing screenplays. Yeah. I bought all of them and I was working on a screenplay. Um, so that's a passion. So when you get jump started on that, man, let's talk about some film. Yeah. Um, because guys like Kevin Smith did it with 10K. And like you say, given our technology now, you can do it for way less. I've heard, uh, I've heard a lot of people around here talk about wanting to like take loans on stuff to make movies. Mm. And I was like, okay, now you're, you're kind of going to dig yourself a hole. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to try and make a bunch of money off this. We're not Hollywood. Mm -mm. You need to just enjoy this thing. And it's your first movie is going to be a project. It's going to be a side project. It's going to be fun. You know, it's not going to be the greatest. There's so much to it. You, like they need to do a little more and like invest in yourself more. It's a passion. If it, you're passionate about it. Yeah. We all want to make money. I want to make money. Yeah. But you know what I really want is to put something out there that I could be proud of. If that's a small film and it doesn't gross a million dollars locally. Yeah. That's cool. If three people, you and your sister and brother-in-law watch my film, I win. Yeah. Absolutely. I've, I've, I'm there, man. So, I win. So, the little things make me so happy, mm-hmm. and I'm not even lying about that. It's like high fives make me happy, man. Yeah. Fucking high Remember the first time I wrote a piece of content, which was fairly not too long ago, uh, for a client. Uh, my day job, I work at an advertising and marketing office, and I, I do a lot of con- <sighs> man, a ton of content <laughs> writing. But I had to write a blog for a client. And I remember the day I went to their website and saw that blog on there. Now, the, the shitty thing is, is they pass it off as their own. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of like, man, that's my voice. Yep. That's my written word. But I remember <laughs> seeing that on there and being so proud that it was just something that I did and got to see it in print. And I was like, man, that's really cool. Yeah. But it's dull. <laughs> it's not as cool as writing films, but we could write a masterpiece, you know? Yeah. Pen to paper. Um, So... Like with this, has it been stressful trying to get man this started? Have you lost sleep over it? Yeah, you know, I have lost a ton of sleep. I operate on about five hours a night on yeah. a good night because once my head hits that pillow, that's the when it brain starts, starts going. going. Dude. I've yeah. actually recently taken to wearing headphones and listening to meditation uh, audibles. Yeah, in my brain so that I can try to wind down. See, that is one thing I had. A huge problem with sleeping like up until this thing started rolling now that i kind of have it i can kind of relax a yeah. little more at night i can kind of fall asleep because i know i have it and i can i can do it i was losing sleep over not doing it like not uh being able to help people out there you know express and stuff and talk to the community i was like man somebody needs to do this and nobody is moving forward so I was like, let's get this. And I just kept losing sleep all the time. Now, yeah, man, it's on, it man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think the key is that I have a huge problem doing this is trying. I don't want to say limit yourself because we talk just the opposite. Right. Um, but don't bite off more than you can chew. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm a huge guy that I do that way too much. So I constantly have my hands in a lot of cookie jars. And I need to scale back and focus on, I'm not a great multitasker. I've had to tell myself this. So with the studio, it has been really stressful, but now we finally got to a place where the work of putting it together is done. Now all I have to do is the simple stuff. I got to create our social channels, which I'll probably do this evening or tomorrow. And then it's just opening it up to the world and letting that thing grow. So next week, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, for sure. Um, We should do an on-location shoot at the studio. You could be... I am down. Yeah, we should actually make that happen. We could do a tour or two. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, I dig it. So that's the whole idea, man, is just to break bread with people, man. What are you into? What do you do that's creative? Do you have a place to do that? I have a place for you to do that. I have so many friends. Get out and create. Yeah. I have so many friends that have nine to fives and they have lost all passion that's that's a shitty thing they need it i mean they can come to me anytime and i'll help them and now with your studio we can get the ball rolling we can we can just go in and help out man we're just gonna be out here saving lives bro seriously man saving lives mental health is a big thing these days 
I don't know how anxiety has gotten so huge out of in, control in animals and in us. And it's just it's so crazy how anxiety has gotten so high. But now, like, people need, they want that self expression a lot more. So, and they have the me. Cool. It, it's such a weird organic thing where <laughs> I don't know where it started from either. I remember being younger and it being so simple. Like, life was so much simpler. Yeah. Um, obviously you and I are a little older than maybe a lot of our, the viewers and whatnot, but it was a lot simpler time. No offense. And there <laughs> wasn't all the anxiety and depression and sky high suicide rates and all that. Yes. It all boils down to we're overstimulated. Yes, we are. The means that we have to create is so vast, but it overwhelms people. So when they could be using those outlets to break out of a depression or mm -hmm. get over anxiety, they're being overstimulated, which I think is causing all of it. And so you really got to find that middle line and that balance, man. You got to find that balance. If you don't this, find that balance, you're going to be on one end of the spectrum. This is very true because uh, it's so hard to understand. Like some people don't even get it. Like their anxiety is high. And it's mm -hmm. the more, you know, self-expression you do, the more alleviated you feel. Yeah. Stress-free. Uh Marijuana is not legal here, so CBD is out of the question, and marijuana, yeah. and medically, I mean. Well, as soon as the other 49 states are fully legal, then maybe old South Dakota will jump on board. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm looking at you, governor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be, we will be the last state in the nation to legalize <clears throat> marijuana. So. Um, I have hope. Just because there are medical... Uh, positives that it can be mm. used for but i mean here they don't believe that no and they don't a lot of these younger crowd they need to get out and vote and right now you can do it they want to and this is what we talked about earlier too it's the same kind of thing like while we talk about taking that leap you know what i mean it's a yep. lot of don't talk about it yeah go out and do it man yep yep well, marijuana and our laws suck okay well get out and vote man go to, go to new approach south dakota and go vote they'll yep. sign you up if you're not registered Get it done, because I mean, the only way we ever get anything done here in this community is to get off your ass. Yeah, and you got to get off your ass, and you got to start doing something. Everybody wants everything handed to them. They just want laws to change. They just want things to go their yeah. way. But nobody, and not everybody, I'm not pigeonholing everybody, but most, yeah. most of you suckers. We all understand that. Everybody wants it. Like, give it to me. Give it to me. A lot of the people who actually do watch the podcast are all about moving forward, building this future for us, and that's what I'm about building this whole future for us we don't need like cable nowadays people are canceling their cable uh because now you can get a lot of online uh you know free channels and stuff yeah. pluto you got hulu crackle uh well hulu you gotta pay for and then netflix you gotta pay if for. you but have a student so email people. address hulu oh, yeah. is only five dollars yeah and you get a subscription to spotify which yeah. we are on and spotify. showtime we are on spotify yep i was in my last semester of school when i found that out i'd been paying for hulu spotify and the showtime app and a classmate was like you have all three of those do you know you can have all three of those for five dollars if you put in your student email address i didn't know that i had a subscription to hulu either because i just had spotify for a long time and like included is uh, yeah package it's crazy I was, like, I was like what yeah like, well, we're missing out on all this content i know man i suck it up too man i'm bad i love movies dude. i love movies I can sit I'm, I'm really into good tv series as well i don't watch junk i get made fun i'm not of, channel surfing i get made fun of a lot because i like animated films huge animated films and i love rom-coms dude yeah, yeah buddy one of my favorite movies is pretty woman man. hey man <laughs> julia <laughs> <laughs> that's such a great movie it's such dude. a great movie I can't get over it and people you know richard gear ain't bad man if i can look like richard gear when i'm in my 50s I'm, I'm solid yeah i'm good absolutely so have you heard i'm sure you have heard and i just want to touch on it quickly new matrix movie Ooh. oh man, man i don't know i don't know, I don't know. I, I, I have know, a problem with it how you try to go back and now say what Okay, Neo and Trinity weren't dead, and maybe they were just outside the Matrix or yeah. something. Like, there's, how do you write that in? And are you really pushing too hard to bring back characters to life? There's so many movie makers out there that are running out of ideas. Uh, their imagination is gone. Now mm. they're just remaking films, trying to make a buck, like this new Aladdin with Will Smith. Yeah. 
I heard the Lion King is garbage. Yeah. I mean, I just they just I don't rehash hate. old ideas, man. It, it's horrible. Like, let's create some new ideas. There's so many things that we can put in the film. I mean, yeah. it's great. And Again, it boils down to people collaborating. Yes. Yes. Creativity and collaboration, man. Yeah. That's it. If anybody out there is, if anybody wants to talk to us about making a movie, hit us up. Hit us up. I'm really about that too, man. That'd I write cool. blogs. <laughs> I want to write films. Damn it! <laughs> I can't blog, man. I don't know. I don't know what it is about reading. I don't think anybody is. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever watching anything I do or reading anything I write. So I. I don't, I don't think people don't are really see. interested too much in what I got going on. People just, my friends around me and the people I surround myself with yeah. um, are so busy in their lives. They just know, they don't even get a hold of Josh. He's probably got 14 things going on today. Yeah. And they're probably right. But 13 of those things could probably drop off if, you know, if, if you really want to get at me and do something. So, <laughs> I mean, we can find time. <laughs> I can pack four more pancakes onto my plate. There is an abundance of uh photographers around here an abundance of photographers everybody picks up a camera and then watch a couple of youtube videos and they think they can become uh a, a photographer yeah what they don't understand is there's a lot more than putting on a costume and putting a black and white filter yeah. on something you there's a lot to it the thing you can't teach people and this is I get, not to pat myself on the back because I'm not the greatest technical photographer in the world. When somebody understands what I do something, have yeah. is an eye. Yeah, I have an eye for interesting. You know what I mean? Yep. I think way outside the box when it comes to photos. You can be the worst technical photographer on the planet, but if you're taking pictures of unique shit with cool angles, yeah. or you just see something in a different light, that's where it's at. It's yeah, it is how you take it in for one. It is knowing a little bit about like composition mm -hmm. and stuff but you don't really have to get textbook on anything so many people aren't really artistic they get to textbook yeah. about everything and then it and then that whole natural primitive type art just loses all that feeling yeah. and then you lose the done, authenticity all of it. Of it. yeah it's just you got to stay somewhat primitive outside the lines in order to make something really grab you like yeah just oh i love that and it's such a unique thing too man and i in my older age in my advanced age i like to call it um i'm finding that a lot of this stuff that we found really cliche as youngsters is cool is cool yeah. um and one of them is beauty is in the eye of the beholder it is i use that in my brain when i do photos like, yeah because it's it is and you do have to see composition and you have to see things but it's in the way that you see it yeah don't look at a photo subject or an object in the way a book tells you you need to do the lighting and there the is composition. only one way to do this yeah no, that's yeah, and that's, that's what that's what books and the internet will tell you it is yep uh, if like, you do that down at creative 605 it'll kick that box <laughs> right out from underneath you and let you really do some work yeah that is so you guys have more are they rooms like this or is it one giant room it's one giant room it's it's bigger than this. Uh, thankfully, this is a little small for the studio. It's perfect for podcasts. It is. Um, if you took this room Tiny. and added about three feet to the side and probably 15 feet to the wall, that's about how big it is. It's a nice space. So you're going to um, have like a clipboard or something that somebody has a time. Yeah. Um, and you're actually limit you gonna have a limit time. No, you know, if. If the studio's open that day and there's not other people wanting to use it, you come in and use it all day, man. Cool, cool. You know what I mean? And as far as you were talking about a music studio, the great thing is at first we were worried, like, well, if we if we have artists that come in here and want to, you know, link up their amps and create music, yeah. like, well, is it too loud? Well, within days of us signing the lease on that studio, Cave Collective began downstairs directly what's, below us. What's Cave Collective? Um, Cave Collective is a. I haven't been there, so I can't say too much because I don't know. All I know is when I'm at the studio in the evening time, it's loud. Oh yeah, it's really loud. They got the the sidewalk space, and basically what it is is a place for like punk rock shows. Oh cool, traveling artists. All right. Yeah, it's loud. I'm man. gonna have to talk to I them. Know. Yeah, yeah. They uh they they ran into some issues with. They were doing like a Friday night EDM thing, 
which if you know anything about the EDM scene, I, I don't. It's nah. not really my jam. It's not mine either. I only get down on EDM if Red Man's on the track. And then I really like... <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't, I don't explore I, with drugs anymore. Yeah, so I don't. Really so exactly, EDM, I don't. Man. I don't really you get down like that. <laughs> you know, I think you do or something like that. Not saying that if you listen to EDM, you do that, but well, if you do listen to EDM, you probably, you probably do. do. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to talk yeah. shit, but yeah, you probably do. But they have this whole scene where traveling artists come down, and it's a lot of punk rock, and it's a lot of EDM stuff. So they they have this base. It's kind of a similar thing that we got going on upstairs. So I was like, well, this is outstanding yeah so bands could go there and practice yeah too. All so right, we'll good. have bands that want to come up to the studio well you bring your stuff man that is a big problem too around here we need the music scene to come back it does because it is horrible and people don't know that rapid city used to have this mega punk rock scene you know it was it was just it was punk rock, but it was it's what put us on the map mm -hmm. it was huge music scene here and every weekend there is great bands from all over coming and you don't have to go to the civic center to have a great band. Nope. you don't have to wait till sturge rally comes around uh there are people here that actually want to see and they bitch all the time but we got to go to red rocks we got to go to colorado mm -hmm. you know, we got to go to sioux falls well get off your ass yeah do something and, about that yes and start making a band and people will come out and watch you and then more bands will start noticing that and they'll start coming and somebody open up a venue yeah and this is great like yeah people need to really uh start playing some more music around I know, here, man, man. Yeah, hip-hop we need a hip-hop scene there's got to be music man yes. music is life i love like music, my whole man. my whole world literally revolves what's around a, music. what's your favorite genre of music my favorite genre of music is very early 90s hip hop. Oh, right, man. Like I'm a I'm a product of the Wu Tang clan. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's my jam. Hell yeah, man. Wu Tang's a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wu Tang is for the children. I like <laughs> I like It's my jam. I like older hip hop too, but I'm not uh I don't exclude like some of the new stuff. Some of the new stuff is pretty good, but I am a metal guy just yeah. because just because the the difficulty the technicality of it and I, I just love it like my brain starts working like that how it, there's such a misconception around metal it is it's not angry it's, uh, it's no, not man you try to play them chords man yeah, you try to bang them sticks it's it's a lot different like than people if you don't give it a chance and you don't listen to something really great there is a lot of crap out there there is yeah. so much junk music in every genre there's junk music but some people make some really great passionate music that makes the hair on your neck yeah. stand up. And that's, that's what it's about. Like I can't listen to uh, an album from front to back because they weren't inspired the whole time. Mm -hmm. They maybe have had something go on that they had a shitty song. So, you know, it just depends. You gotta be, I am picky with my music. I'm like, a snob, man. I like am. I'm super open in my life about a lot of things. Not so much, man, when it comes to music, yeah. like I'll take recommendations from close friends oh um, yeah and then you might not like it and then i might not yeah. like it i think i think sharing your favorite song with a friend or like somebody you kind of don't know sharing your favorite song is kind of like sharing underwear it's, it's very it's, personable it's man. personal it's yeah, personal it's, because are you gonna enjoy this hear fit it like we I hear do? it differently remember the movie white men can't jump yeah wesley and woody are talking about you can't hear jimmy yeah or you I can hear Jimmy. I can hear Jimmy. I can you know, hear Jimmy just it's, like it's you hear like Jimmy. That, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's it's what what matters to me might not mean shit to you. Yep. Now I think, and it's not my favorite album of all time, but I think the greatest album of all time is the Equimini album from Outcast. Equimini. Oh, Equimini. Okay, sorry. It is the <laughs> most beautifully crafted piece of music I've ever heard. It's that not is, even my favorite album. It just, is. It's the best album. It is uh, in any genre, in my opinion. It is southern. That is southern yeah, hip hop. Real southern hip hop. It's, it's, it's soul. Their soul, man. It gets right into my it's, chest. It's ambient for sure. Yeah. And it's chill. Yeah, it's yeah, good. It's, I like it, it gets into my soul. Uh, when you're talking about music and like song lyrics and stuff, you know, we all interpret it differently, but we do. God, it sucks For right into my soul. Everybody tries to relate to mm -hmm. a song and stuff, but that artist might have meant something completely different. Yeah. But it just depends on how you take it in. And there, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, like, it's not all poetry. Yeah. All music's not poetry. Sometimes they just sit down and they go right off the top, man. Yeah. And think of something right there. So, and sometimes it's, it, let's be honest, it's just making noise to make money. I mean, that's a thing too. You know, there are and some no people... disrespect to the people doing that. You go out and get paid, man. That's great. I personally like my musicians yep. to put 
I, I want them to bleed onto that paper yeah. and, and give it to they, me. Uh, some people actually do just try and make a buck and they're like, people are going to like this. We're going to write about this. Well, some people really put their heart and soul into it and it's embarrassing. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> but it's great, you know, cause I mean like when you put your real feelings and stuff into something, yeah. it's kind of, you're putting yourself out there. So you, it's kind of uncomfortable, but some people just talk about, you know, just put a beat on. Yeah. Yeah. My car ran out of gas today. Well, I feel like a lot of these you said you you get down with some of the the new age hip hop. I I just don't like. I'll get down to a few people, um, but man, it's garbage. It's just really bad. And I feel like because it's not it's not even hip. Drake, yeah. J Cole. I like those guys, man. Yeah. I can get down with J Cole. I can't get down with Drake. I get down with Kendrick. Um, but mostly when I'm listening to hip hop, man, it's it's '90s, maybe some mid 2000s. You're old, I know, man, and I'm stubborn <laughs> as hell too, See, man. That's, like that's big thing time, too. I'm yeah. real stubborn. I won't listen. I have friends that are like, oh, recently I had a good buddy of mine, Mitchell Stafford. Big shout out to Mitchell. Um, tell me, Machine Gun Kelly. He's like, you gotta listen to this new Machine Gun Kelly. And then he shared a song on his Facebook. Yeah. I listened to that song and I was like, man. That's kind of good. Now I want to hate this dude, right? Like yeah. I don't want to like this dude. So he's like, "Man, I'm telling you, you got to listen to the album." So I went on Spotify and I, I gave it a full listen front to back, and I was kind of floored, man, because I found myself. And this doesn't happen often because music speaks to each of us in its own language. Absolutely. But I was feeling what the dude was saying. I'm like, "Geez, I get this dude. Like, I get him. He's kind of speaking what I lived when I was his age, so I can relate to it." So there's that where you're super stubborn with music. And then there's those times where you say, I'll give it a shot. And you're kind of like, eh, it's not terrible. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not bad. Yeah. It's I, just interpreted differently. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm stoked about the new Tool album coming out. Like, that's my jam coming out. So there are, uh, there's a lot of people, how your brain works, uh, familiar from, how do I say that word? Familiar. Familiar. Familiarity. Fam oh, that's tough. Familiarity. Familiarity. <laughs> I don't know. It's why. like family and arity. Familiarity. Family arity. It's familiarity. family arity. Familiarity. <laughs> familiarity. <know>. Anyway, <laughs> that's stupid. That's a dumb word. Anyway, <laughs> I can't even familiarity. I know I can't do it. All right. Anyway, familiarity with uh, things that are easy to follow, yeah. and that's why a lot of people like all the music on like ninety three one, mm -hmm. uh, one hundred two, and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that, but. I, I don't know, man. My brain, it just, I like that complex. I need substance. Yeah. I need substance. I need something that's going to take me. I can't, like, I will hear something different the next couple times I'll listen to it. It's not, you can't figure it all out. Because I do play music too. Yeah. So I beat to the, you know, I play my hands to the beat. Uh, I can count time. I can figure it all out. And I'm like, this is easy. Throw it away. Yeah. Yeah, if it takes me a couple times, I'm like, I like this. I, like I don't know this. what's going on here. I need that's the thing is, man, with my music, and there's occasionally, you know, just throw on a beat and let me just clean yeah. the house. You know what I mean? And rap, that's fine. Rap is rap uh, is mostly like that to me. It is tough. I it's today's rap. I I feel like all these these rappers got all these kids fooled. They do. They do because they have them fooled because they know these rappers know they can go sit down, write Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, seventy four <laughs> times. Put it out on TikTok and then YouTube, and the people between 13 and 20 years yeah. old are like, oh, Gucci King, Gucci King. Yeah. Get out of here with that. But these artists are like, Psh, gassed them up, made four mil. And they're getting away with it, man. They are, they're getting man. away with it. I can't. Uh, was that rapper? Six, nine. Oh, man. I follow a, him. He made a ton of money. And a lot of dope. I, I follow him trouble. religiously. I, I literally, I check for him every day on Google. Because I've been following him since the day he started. Because so I found it so. Are you waiting for him to get out of prison? Oh, I can't wait, man. <laughs> I can't wait to. I can't wait to see him face down on the sidewalk, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He's. I don't know. I. I did listen to him a little bit. He sounded like a, like a shouter, like a like a rapper who's a shouter. Yeah. And it's I, all been weird. I didn't understand. I want to. I want to fight the dude. I didn't understand anything that he was uh, saying. He None ain't saying them. nothing. That's the thing is he ain't saying nothing. Yeah. But I find myself so fascinated by him. Because the whole genre that he's in fascinates me. I'm really into psychology. That's you know. So the, is, the fascination for me is is watching this generation of kids just yep. be. You're getting the blinders put over you, man. You are. You're letting these dudes get rich off your lack of substance. There's like all the kids in their environment. Like in order to be cool, 
with the cool kids, it's it's what's cool these days. So they're taking the influence. They think like California is way cooler than the Black Hills. So anything that's cool over there, they're gonna think is yeah. they need to make it cool here in order to be cool. But dude, we are not no. any part of the world. We are beautiful in our own way, and we can do whatever the hell we want. You can be like whatever we want, and it doesn't have to be junk rap. It can be ten times more difficult and still be. We could set the platform yeah. for the rest of the world. I mean, there's so many talented people around here. Yeah, man. There, oh god, there's so many talented yep. people. I can't in, wait. I can't in wait every until, facet. There's can't, so much talent. I can't wait until some kid who's working as a dishwasher or cook right now is just like, I cannot wait until this studio opens mm-hmm. up because my ass is gonna be there and I'm gonna record and I'm gonna do all this and I can, you know. I want that kid to blow up. Oh, man. I want to see some people, too. I'm going to keep – we need to make a – oh, man. Like a a way to to find out what people are doing who are using it rather than hashtag something bigger, you know? I did this today here in the studio. There's a – I know you're pretty savvy as well. Through the advent of social media, there's there's no no limit to what we can achieve and what we can pump out. No limit. Um, we have a another business that we're working on. My partner and I. I'm not going to get into and self promote myself that way because that's actually a paid business. Nice. Um, but on our business card, it says the sky is no longer the limit. That's a part of the business card. It says those words because it's not, man. That is true. If you say the sky's the limit, well then, okay. What are you going to do when you reach the sky? You're done. Yeah. Nah, man. Pluto, Go baby. For it. Those kids that are washing dishes right now, they need to realize the sky's not the limit, man. No, there's zero limit. You yeah. have the world at your fingertips. You might not have anybody believing in you. You mm-hmm. might not have anybody. You might have people just calling you crazy or stupid or something. Like, dude, don't do this. You can't make a living off this. You need to worry about rent. Yeah, do it. Yeah, do, do it. it. You, Shut up. You and gotta. Do it. You gotta fail once. A couple. Don't times listen to your parents. Don't, yeah, to your don't listen to your professors. Yeah, just my... don't do it. Oh man! Jump in, man. Yeah, I really didn't have anybody standing behind me, but you just go. Yeah, fail, fail. I don't you, care. You gotta fail. I don't care. I failed before many adversity, times. adversity, failure, yeah. man. I failed many times. Fall flat things. on your face. Yep. Do those things, Stand and then up. get up and be like, "Man, that hurt. That was pretty cool." Yeah. Oh man, who was that? I got a buddy who failed at uh, running a co- uh, construction company. Lost everything, sold his car, sold his house, had to move back in with his parents, started a new one, and now he's he's loaded. Yeah. yeah. Give it a shot. Give it a oh, second shot. He Give it a seventh a, shot. He is enjoying what he does, and he, he knows what he's doing. So it's like, good, man. Run a construction company. If you know how, and you got all the techniques down, go for it. Yeah, man. Because I suck at it. So Yeah. I need someone to come do construction. I can't do it. You know? Yeah. If it's something you enjoy doing, go out and do it. There is a... If it's construction, if it's babysitting other people's kids if it's wiping the asses of elderly people yeah whatever that is man if that's your jam that's your jam that's, that's, what that's you it dude food. being yeah. a cook open up something small and fancy here yeah. come on i want and this fails and you know this progressive fails. progressive often fails in in rapid city and i think it's because people don't stick with it yeah because they get that failure yeah and then they're like meh that ain't working food i want someone one of you are good enough out there to make this happen. And I'll help you on the business end. Create a restaurant, a very small joint that each day you have an, either an email list or an app. And at one o'clock in the afternoon, you put out tonight pork tenderloin and you take 30 reservations. And that's all you're serving that night is pork tenderloin and whatever else you got going on. That would be cool. And then the following day you put out that thing tonight pork butt. Yeah. Yeah. And people see it on their app. They're like, plus one. That's cool. That's and each cool. night, you just have your 30 people show up. You do dinner service. You close it down. That's a good That'd idea. That'd be dope, dude. Yeah. We need progression like that, yeah. man. Start thinking outside the box. I think I think pe- too many people are uh, overwhelmed with mm. how many old people around here are the ones who are controlling yeah. this whole state. Well, some of them actually are behind us. Yeah. I was. There's a handful, man. There's a handful that don't think in the, in the 50s. There's a funny story. About me and my girlfriend were at uh, somewhere out here in Rapid eating breakfast, and there was a group <laughs> you know, right over there. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a group of old people, older people, and they were eating breakfast about 
probably five, six of them. And we were just enjoying our meal. And they were like, oh, yeah, I keep this thing in my car. And I take a couple of hits once in a while when I need to calm down. And I was like, I looked over and I looked at my girlfriend. She's like, I'm like, is she talking about what she thinks she's talking about? And she's like, I got it for my grandson. Like, there's like, you can take like the CBD, you can do this. And they were definitely talking about marijuana. And I was like, oh, my God, babe, are they really talking about marijuana? Yeah. She was like, they are. She's like, she said that they just smoked before they came in. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, you know it's not about weed at all. It's yeah. about uh, feeling, you know, yeah. like that release. You got to have a beer, have a beer, you know. Yeah. If, you're, if your thing is smoking a joint and getting some hash browns, smoke a joint and get some hash browns. Yeah. You know what Just I mean? Just don't get caught for now. Just don't get caught for now. Yeah. Uh, and I love seeing old people like that because there is a lot of them there is it is it is a lot lot of them there's a lot of professionals around you too who are like oh man i tell people this all the time because being coming from a bartender background for 15 years basically in rapid city when people want to talk about well marijuana shouldn't be made legal i look at these people and i say do you have any idea the network of people that i know in rapid city doctors lawyers pediatricians every walk of life (laughs) these are just regular folks that are just taking their life by the balls and saying it's mine man this is my life there are so many don't worry about what i'm doing yeah there are so many things around here that people are skeptical on just live your life Mm -hmm. live your life don't let anybody like just don't be a huge problem yeah but if you're happy and you're cool go for it yeah clap your hands <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying but it is that you know what i mean yeah it is that and people we live in such a beautiful place man the black hills is just there's just there's really nothing like it we're, we're nestled in the midwest we got this beautiful place it's small it's this cozy great. I love it's it. so good man yep. right like we're 20 minutes away from the most beautiful part some of the most beautiful country in this country the lakes the lakes badlands it's, it's just dope man there's no shortage of awesome going on in South Dakota. So much to do here. If we can just keep this ball rolling on kind of progressing culturally and politically, mm-hmm. this place will be, I'm telling you, man, like the epicenter of the country because this is the joint right yeah, here. Yeah, Colorado doesn't have anything on us. Mm-hmm. Everybody young who wants that free life wants to move to Colorado. This is it right here. Yeah. Just need to make it happen. Just yeah. need a be a little part belief. of it. Be a part. Put of in it. some yep. effort and be a part of it. Yeah, be a part of uh, this whole community. Yeah, Just... Rapid City. Rapid City is building something, man. And I've been here most of my life, outside of a couple detours to big, big cities. Yeah. Um, and how far it's come in the last 10, 15 years, five years especially. You know, if you go back just five years and look at where we're at. Yeah, we still got some some crusty old white folks over there on the hill that are trying to run the show. Yep. But slowly, you know what I mean? Slowly the tide is turning. It and is. Once that tide keeps rolling, man, this place is going to be so it's going to be a great place to live for the rest of your life. I'm excited. I dig it. All right. Well, uh next do week, things, man. Do things. Yeah. Get stay motivated, stay inspired. Alleviate that that yeah. art inside of you just pu- pull it out push it out just do something but we'll be looking for you next week yeah, yeah one of man. my favorite p- podcasters chris gillibo always says at the end of his show inspiration is good but inspiration with action is better <laughs> remember that folks hey josh thanks for being on man yeah man how can uh how can somebody how can somebody check this out you got a website do you guys i'm working on it this week uh most people most people know me and you can reach out to me, but by the end of this week, you will see the creative 605 studio plastered all over social media. Um, you'll probably catch us downtown passing out some awesome brochures and flyers. We're going to do it real big, man. I'm really into guerrilla marketing things. Good. We're going to splash this town with some creative vibes, man. It's going to be great. When that comes out, uh, you can just check down in the comments. I'll leave all the information on how to get a hold of them, where it's at. Check the studio out. If you're getting inspired and you want to use the studio. Yeah, the um, we're definitely it, your people, man. We're here. Basically, we're just, we're here for you, man. Yeah. We're here to give you a place to create. And if we can help you create in some way, and if it brings any sort of joy to your life, that's, I win. I win. Yes. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It feels so good. It's not good about us. Somebody. It's about all of you. It's about all of us. We're not even like 
trying to kiss ass yeah. and massage anybody's ego here. This is real. Yeah. yeah. If you want to, if you want to stay at home and be miserable your whole life, that's cool too, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I truly don't give a yeah. shit. I would just rather see you get inspired yeah. and do stuff, man. All right, man. All right, well, folks. Well, we'll see you on the next one. Wu Tang is for the children. <laughs> Later, folks. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff, bro. What Good thing.